Thanks so much for stopping by. Yeah. You talked about the future financial model of AI. I know you didn't want to make a prediction, but <laughs> can you at least kind of place bets yeah. or at least help the CFOs watching this, uh, what they might do? Yeah, well, to the CFOs, uh, this is one of the trickier jobs in AI because of the the volatility of, of, of just usage patterns and whatnot. I think directionally what will happen is most AI will translate eventually into some degree of the, the business problem that is being solved. So if I want to write a lot of software code, I'll pay AI to go and, and do that for me. If I want to review a number of contracts, I'll pay AI to do that for me. If I want to um, you know, be able to automate client onboarding, I'll pay AI to do that. So it'll lean uh, consumption oriented uh, with the unit being closer to the outcome that the, that the company is trying to drive. And then the big question will be, um, do companies land on a subscription kind of pricing model where you have a lot of predictability, or do you have a model where you know it could spike if there's a lot of usage, but you also then spend less when, in the moments where there's not? And I think that'll be really driven by the preference of the of the customer. Uh, I think vendors will often offer you know often offer both options uh, for for companies. The good news is, um, I think most most companies can feel comfortable that you will ultimately only be paying for the value that you're getting from AI, um, and it's uh, it's sort of the closest thing that we have in the market to uh, to outcome based pricing of software. So I pay for an outcome, uh, and I'll stop paying if I don't get it. And talk to me about the transparency of outcome based financial models. Yeah, how are business leaders kind of for the next year? supposed to figure out what output and and how they should be tracking those tasks today so that when we charge them, it's not surprising. Yeah, I mean, there, this is a, um, you know, one, one of the tricky things is that there's a lot of variability depending on the providers. So we as an industry on the software side haven't really exactly landed on any nomenclature across these things. Sometimes you'll pay for compute units. Sometimes you'll pay for just, again, the number of, of, of sort of outcomes you want in that particular field. So I want a um, hundred sales leads, and I'll pay AI to go get me that hundred sales leads, and, and I'll, I'll sort of spend whatever that looks like. Um, and then other software again will be: I want um, a certain number of compute running against this particular problem, and I pay for compute units. So you know, again, we're, we're, we haven't quite landed on on any standardization in the industry. Visibility, transparency, tracking, the ability to kind of tune up and down; mm. these are all going to come. So to the extent that we haven't as an industry standardized on that side, we will. We, we, you know, we had sort of the early days of SaaS looked very similar. We couldn't quite figure out what, what is the exact pricing mechanism for all, you know, most software. The prices were very different between different yeah. seat types. And then eventually you kind of converged in, in a number of categories. And I think we'll see the same with AI. I want to pivot a little to AI agents. Yeah. You're, you're the king of grounded hot takes in AI. <laughs> and so Didn't know I, that was a thing, but I'll, oh, I'll yeah, take no, it. Great. The okay. award is okay. out there. Grounded hot takes, um, okay. I want to hear yes. what your 2025 prediction is for AI agents. And maybe you can even start, are you using AI agents in your daily life? Yeah. Um, well, unfortunately, when you say that that uh, I do grounded hot takes, now now I have to make sure that my, my yeah, take here is, yeah. is grounded and apparently very, very compelling. <laughs> Um, so, um, I, you know, I think I think uh, I think 2025 for agents will look like 2023 for a, for kind of the normal chat AI models. Okay. I think we're I think this is sort of the first year where where the industry has wrapped its head around this idea that the AI models kind of question and answer on an assistant is super powerful. We got a lot done with it. It's going to be clearly a mainstay interaction pattern. Mm -hmm. But probably the real breakthrough of AI is when you can deploy AI to go do real work for you. It comes back when it's done, shows you some progress along the way. And so I think somewhere this year we'll start to see the 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 you know the feeling of that early trajectory like we saw in 2023 on ChatGPT was just rolling out. People were hearing about it in the winter of, of 2022. It really took off in 2023. So I think we'll see that with agents. Um, I have um, I probably have a, a, a handful, not 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 yeah. dozens yet of of sort of at least daily or weekly agent use cases. Um, sometimes it's about finding information on the web. Sometimes it's it's um, I did this thing the other day where with my five and a half year old we we had a um, uh, we had a video game built um, uh, a browser based video game that an agent went off and did. Um, and so I think you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of these kind of use cases where I want to get something done that I either don't have the time or skill set for. And, uh, and, and I think we're all going to have versions of that across the workforce in, for the first time in 2025. And then, of course, I think things start to, to go exponential in the out years. Can you talk a little bit about the interface? Like a lot of the things we're seeing, cloud computer use, we're sitting there watching 
this AI agent go and take action? Do you foresee that humans are going to be sitting and watching these things take action, kind of overseeing? Like, yeah. what is that human experience of the user experience, including me? Agent? Yeah, Th this one is is uh, is very much an up for grabs problem. So um, because. We talk a lot about this idea of human in the loop, mm -hmm. and we want AI to perform things that we can verify and validate, but but it's almost impossible to have human in the loop and full agentic workflows because I have I really don't have the ability to verify and validate, you know, if an AI has done you know a hundred different tasks or steps in a in in work, um, I can't possibly verify all of the work that that kind of went into that final output. So I could verify the final output, like does that design look good? Um, does that contract sort of seem like it was it was uh, you know um, processed in a in a you know compelling way? But I can't possibly know all the things that are happening. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of user interfaces right now that that imagine human in the loop. And the real what we, when the real value of AI is probably when when an agent actually starts to drive most of the the execution of the task. So um, uh, I think we're in for another evolution of these uh, interfaces. Right now, most of people's understanding of AI is I go somewhere, I ask a question, I get an answer back. Yeah. Um, but what happens when that answer is the full kind of product that I was trying to get done? I want you to write a full application that I can go deploy. Well, there's no human in the loop then mm -hmm. that can go verify the work that went into that. Um, and so I do think we'll have different modes because some things I, I will just ask the question and want a quick answer back, and then other things I will want a full you know amount of work to be completed. In which case, that software paradigm you know could end up looking very different than than what we're used to today. And so to close that gap, yeah. you're thinking maybe it's increased trust, but also maybe it's just different versions that we might be seeing. Sometimes uh, we yeah. want to see the trillion options it went through, yeah. and sometimes we actually don't need that verification. Yeah, so, so well, well, I think the ability to always have uh, the steps laid out and what it did, so you can always audit it. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people will, will sort of over time get, to get you know comfortable not auditing it, yep. but you should always see all, all of the different tasks that That's it executed. Great. Um, so imagine that we'll always have a history log of everything that the AI did, no, no question. But again, the more more steps you you take, the more abstraction the user is going to need from all those steps. Um, uh, I think we're we're starting to see, you know, interestingly um, uh, examples of this. So if you look at what Devin does, um, uh, which is the the new technology from Cognition uh, Labs, um, you know, you can kind of watch it doing the coding, and you can watch the output of the coding. If you look at Anthropic with its uh, feature called Artifacts. On one hand, it's sort of telling you the work it's doing. On the other hand, you, you're watching it actually then visually do that work um, and whatever it produces. So, you know, many companies are experimenting with different modes of this right yeah. now. Um, as I think we I've always done in software, there's a, a lot of uh, experimentation at first. We then look at each other's software. We pull it back in. We then deploy whatever the, the best practice ends up ends up being. And let me end with one yeah. sort of lightning question. Okay. When you're thinking about enterprises, folks that are watching this, yeah. what do you think one thing would be surprising to them for what they'll see in 2025? Um, I think uh, I, I think that um, voice, video, uh, visual AI, uh, you know, plus the kind of text-based um, reasoning engine. This this uh, fusion uh, of of multimodal AI uh, coming together is going to have some pretty profound use cases. You can already do this on the consumer side. So ChatGPT now has a mode where where you you press a button and you can have it see your camera on mm -hmm. your phone, um, which means you can hold it up to anything and say translate this or tell me the price of this or you know what could I do with with. These? I asked it for haircut advice. Oh, okay. Did you actually? Yeah. Okay. How'd it go? It was okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, uh, so you told know, me to get bangs. I didn't okay. do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So I don't know. Maybe it's not always up to date on the, the modern fashion trends, but the um, uh, it, it's uh, at, at a minimum right now. I think you're going to see a lot of consumer novelty use cases. Yeah. But at a minimum, the fact that that is possible, mm -hmm. like we're going to see, you know, again, thousands of things that are like, okay, that's very trivial. But that's not that's missing the the, the forest from the trees, um, which is the fact that it, it can see. It has a reasoning engine behind it at the level of GPT-4 and beyond. Yeah. Uh, it can talk back to you in real time very synchronously. That opens up quite a bit. Think about the future of robotics. Think about the future of, um, of any kind of manufacturing process. Anything where you need AI to look at your screen and be able to tell you answers to things mm -hmm. based on what's in your computer. When you combine visual, audio, and the reasoning engine of the model, uh, we, we have now you know, really getting closer to kind of super super intelligence type use cases. I love that. And thank you so much for making sure that everyone focuses on experimentation yep. this year. Thanks so much for cool. stopping by. Thank you. Here. Thanks for having me.